Uh, it's called this meeting to order. Uh, minutes, of course, I didn't write them, so we don't have any to approve. Um, so eventually, I was, we... I was looking. I said, "Did I miss something? Did we have that meeting last month or no? Did you guys meet in December, like right before Christmas?" Yes. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. I just had company, like Susan. So. Yeah. Um, let me pull up. I just had the agenda. I'm sorry. So we were just, uh, it's the normal agenda, right, uh, uh, Lauren? It's like going through the different things that are going on. Yes. It starts with the project updates. Paul. Hi, Paul. Is it weird? Oh, you want me to share it? How are you? Uh, good. Yeah, if you could share it, that'd be great. Can you see that well, now I, I got it. I got okay. it. All right, 808 Jerusalem Road. So we did get a note from... Jill looking for um, people at the that worked for three different banks, Abington, um, Rockland, I think one Rockland and Eversource or something like that. Or um, I, I, I reached out to my um, my yeah. contact. They never responded. The affordable I went to the affordable housing trust, asked them for contacts. Uh, they didn't have any. Well, actually, they said they had a bunch, but they never responded. So I think Jill just put them in without any uh, you know, contacts there. So we'll hope for the, uh, the best. But besides that, I don't know if anybody else has any updates on 808. Yeah, I don't know how important it is for the contact at Rockland, but there is a person from Rockland in town. Yeah, he's the president. Uh, yep, the trust mentioned that as well. They all said that they would send the information on to Jill. They lied. Um, so unfortunately, none of that happened. Um, if if anybody has contacts, feel free. Uh, I think I copied you all on the, the, the Jill from Habitat. You, you should have her email. Feel free just to reach out to her directly. Okay. It's not appropriate for our committee to kind of reach out to him just as with him being a Cohasset resident. You know, if you'd like to, feel free. No, I meant more official capacity than just me personally. I mean, I don't really know him. Yeah, I don't know him at all either. Um, I mean, I'm, if somebody has some sort of contact information, I'm willing to cold call him. Um, okay. I, you send it to me, I'll, I'll cold call him. Okay, I'll okay. see what I can come up with something maybe. <clears throat> All right, uh, the lovely Chief Justice Highway, never-ending project that everybody complains about on Facebook. Um, let's. I, I don't know anybody. Uh, Lauren, any updates on that? Or uh, yes, Paul? so I can tell you that they've um, they've been working down on the let's say twelve item punch list that the building inspector had given them this past summer to try to get their path to occupancy closer and closer. They did check off approval from the planning board um, for their site plan approval, though there's a list of conditions they need to satisfy first. But they are in discussions with the building inspector on a potential path to a um, a partial certificate of occupancy. So uh, the hope there would be that they could at least connect some of the residential units um, in, a, in a transition plan and phasing uh, such that the, and the building inspector has indicated if they were to go that route, if it, we can make that work, they would look to put the actual deed restricted affordable units on the first phasing of that. So um, if I asked him this morning, approximately how long, I mean, there's a lot of pieces that the applicant will need to complete and ways of permitting to get to this point, but they are moving along, making progress. And at this point we, could potentially anticipate this spring um, starting to see at least a partial CFO for that project. Yeah. That could be our first unit. Yeah, from uh, yeah, from the sewer department's perspective, we've been moving right along with the plans and approving what has been presented. So it's it's progressing through the process. Cool. Um, the next one is Elm Street. What's <clears throat> Elm Street? That's uh, Cost and Harbor offsite units. Oh, okay, the offsite units. Yep, the hotel. Yeah, the hotel that's okay. not there. Yeah, the hotel that's coming down. Yep. So uh, I, th I think they're getting closer. I mean, we're, they were waiting for um, 
some state approval before they sign the contract for the the units that they are going to use in lieu of the um, the, the stuff there. I think that'll happen at some point this year. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if anybody else here has any um, better timeline on that, but I think that they, they were waiting for uh, some additional approvals from the state, not from a from, not from the town. Correct. To, uh, they they um they were looking to receive. It was sort of they were in a little bit of a holding pattern, waiting for their Chapter ninety one permitting to end. Um, and they did receive notice from the state yesterday that it was approved. So they are continuing to make progress. So I would anticipate some more traction on the affordable housing piece now that um that sort of puzzle piece has fallen into place. Awesome. That's great. On Pleasant Street. That's the cross street from JJ's? Correct. Yes. I don't really have a substantial update on this since our last discussion. Um, it was approved for um, permitting, preliminary permitting with the planning board. There's been no construction permits pulled, and I have heard that the site is for sale. So I am um, uncertain as to the future of how this site, uh, when it changes hands, if they'll continue uh, to pursue the permitting that they've been granted through the planning board approval process or you know what the, what the future might hold for that site. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, that one I'm not holding our breath on for, for anything to actually happen. So, so if, uh -oh. if, if the property changes ownership, do they have to go through the planning board again all over, or is it <coughs> a, approved by the planning board, but a change of ownership needs to be registered? Um, if they wanted to do a major a redevelopment of the site there, they would also they would need to come back to planning board for further review. Uh, it just depends on the kind of use they would propose there. A planning board uh, only triggers certain criteria and uses that they need to take a look at. So um, likely, yes, but again, it just depends on what they were looking to do there. Um, awesome. Uh, so other units we have, the uh, mentioned a little bit briefly before you join, Paul, um, the uh, Main Street. So uh, the Affordable Housing Trust did extend to uh, the gentleman, Mr. Chiavo, uh, you know, the agreement that if uh, he makes the one unit affordable, that they would pay um, for the, um, you know, all the costs associated with doing that. Uh, so uh, he would sign a contract uh, with the consultant you know, so that the town's not getting into a contract with the consultant. And as he hits uh, different milestones, he gets basically $10,000 per mi milestone. So for a price, total price of 30,000 to the trust, we should get three units on our stock, one unit, you know, that's actually really affordable. Uh, his initial reaction was very positive. We haven't seen the, him sign the, the contract yet, but um we do believe he's moving forward and we have every reason to believe that he will, uh, he will sign that. Um, and that the work that's being done is making sure everything's, you know, goes to the, to the state. He only gets the final payout if um, it actually is on the affordable housing stock. Uh, the consultant will also help with the whole lottery process. So that's keeping all of that work and that type of stuff away from both the committee and the trust. So I think that's great. Um, and at, Ten thousand dollars a unit. That's a, uh, uh, you know, very good. So, so is there um, is there any movement, um, Lauren, on the uh, village project where the gas station is? So um, the applicant has been inquiring in the pre-application phase about submission deadlines. I am anticipating likely a filing. If I had to guess in February, um, if not February, then in March, but we're looking for an sort of imminent filing and then they'd schedule with the planning board shortly thereafter. So um, I would anticipate that that process would probably start to unfold late spring, early summer for the planning board review. Okay. And those are condominiums, not apartments. You know, I'm not sure they were looking at the feasibility of both. They haven't um, okay. given me the concrete determination on what they are pursuing at this point. Okay. Terrific. Apartments give us a lot more to check off. It does. Um, the other thing I'll note that they what the one of the questions that the applicant did raise is whether we had um, a a formula for payment in lieu. Um, so I know that they were at least considering that option. I did tell them, you know, regrettably, no, we don't have a formula in place. Um, we also don't have a precedent to um, base off of. So I know that's been sort of a something that we've talked about in the past that one of the deficiencies of our inclusionary zoning bylaw is that the inclusionary um 
payment is not specified. So, uh, you know, something to note as a goal that we might to look, look to, you know, at least see what other communities do to try to get something a little bit more realistic for developers to, you know, try to work off of. Yeah, we did bring that up. And I know that was brought up with um, the, the Harbor uh, with the planning board, there are members of the planning board, at least at that point in time, that have absolutely no interest in that. Um, I think they, they're the, based on the bylaw, they're the ones that would have to decide and approve that. Yep. Um, so I think it's something that we could continue to bring up to them. Um, but I don't think that there is a diversity of opinions on whether that's okay. They didn't, there's many, there's members there that weren't okay with the fact that there were units uh, being built not on the site. So just going down the cash, um, I, I don't I, I, I don't know how well that would, that, that'd be a very long meeting, I would yes. be my guess. So it is something I think we should keep on our radar, uh, but, um, and I agree that it should be uh, clear to the uh, developer what it is so that they can make you know, business decisions, but um, not sure how easy that's going to be. Right. Well, Rob, do we have any sense uh, about other communities as to how yeah, I think it's around... that's used and, and maybe we can try to speak to, I don't know, planning board and whoever other powers that would perhaps not be in support of it to let them know how successful it's been in other com communities? Yeah, so uh, communities around us like Weymouth, you know, different, obviously very different communities, but um, the, the do have it. The numbers I, I've heard are around 200,000. Um, you know, I think Duxbury has it uh, as well. That might be around 250, 275. And what do you um, mean by the 250, 275? That's what the the buyout is for the a- uh, Per unit. Yeah, per yeah, unit. Per unit. Um, so that's, I mean, we can get that, we can get that information, you know, and, and I, I think I have it in an email that I can, can send around. Uh, that's kind of the order of magnitude that other, other areas are doing that would help fund the, um, you know, potentially fund the trust. Um, I think it we- It us to, to buy, uh, you know, a large a parcel of land where there can be even more units put in than make what might've been in the first place. Yeah, I think the challenge will be, and I can definitely already hear the, the planning board's concerns is you can't buy a unit in Cohasset for $250,000, right? That's just not going to happen. So why let them off now? So there's other reasons why, I mean, other other communities are, we still want people to come in and develop. Um, and and so they, they want to give them a reasonable amount that's going to still make their project you know um doable but that's these are these are concerns beyond affordable housing that get get get, get put into them but you know i can definitely send around what what, what other communities near us are doing yeah uh, hi, so, so, maybe. yeah so clark originally put this in um when he started um based off of what they had i think in wellesley um if i remember correctly and there was a uh, some some properties in lincoln as well and um, I think to Lauren's point, I think we need to take a look at the, those bylaws specifically on the, on the financial side of the house, because um, even if they pay us in lieu of, it doesn't mean the amount of money should be large enough to buy a house to make it affordable. Um, what we were looking to do is, is find a significant amount that would go into the trust so that we could help convert properties to affordable. And one of the things that we talked about, but we haven't reached a decision on either, is that um, there are some of the nonprofits that have apartments that were willing to convert to affordable. Their concern is they would lose a percentage of rent um, because they're getting it at market value now and they would have to uh, lower the rent for the affordable side. They were looking for compensation for a period of time uh, that would equal that amount that they wouldn't be getting. So we never came up with a formula for that either. So I think we would, and that's something I think may fall in the trust category more than ours, but I think that's something we could help them figure out what other towns are doing and then see what, a, what makes sense for Cohasset. 
So I think um, as a to do, if somebody would like to, we, we do need things to do for 2022. So if somebody would like to volunteer for coming up what with, for a suggestion of what price should be used um, for uh, in lieu of units, I'd be happy to take a volunteer. What did they use for the harbor? Like what, how did they come up with the number? It was so it wasn't a, a dollar number. They actually uh, they have units. They buy in the building. They're yeah. So they the so for they they were required to have a certain amount of units, and they're actually having one more than than those number of units. The oh, weird thing about the, the the whole housing inventory, a unit is a unit is a unit, and whether it's a studio, a one bedroom, or a five bedroom, it all it counts as one, which is you know kind of weird. But they 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 tried to have like sized uh, units. That's something that the uh, the planning board you know, kind of pushed for. Huh. This is Mary. This is Mary. Um, I'm I'm willing to. I can't come up with a number, but um, I I could come up. I could do some research. I'd be happy to talk to the person at MAPC and uh, mm -hmm. anybody else. You know, we can come up with to come up with. You know, in the next probably not in month because I'm away, but um, maybe after that. Uh, you know, to come up with some. Um, ideas of what other towns are doing, not just here, but, you know, North Shore or whatever, but I'm willing to help with it, um, you know, but I think it's, I think it's a discussion among the, you know, the members of the board. Yeah, so I think I'd, if you- I'd be happy to work with you on that too, Mary. Um, but I was thinking, Rob, couldn't we even use what the Harbor is doing and take a look at what they're doing in lieu of having them on site? And then divide that by the many the number that they were required to do, and say, okay, that's a that's a for instance. Then take yeah. So the there's a so there's a financial. I mean, you're more than so. Why don't we have, as you table this as okay? Mary and Susan are going to come back. You know, for let's say plan for the as an agenda item for the March meeting. Um, I think that's a good idea. To I mean, you would have to ask the harbor uh, people. So Ted and whatever, I don't know the financial arrangement that they made. That hasn't been disclosed to, to us. So I, I'll, uh, if they're willing to disclose it, that'd be great, uh, but they might not be willing to, to disclose it. But they might be also, I know Ted has some, Ted Lubitsch has some experience you know, in this, so he might be able to give some insight into what he has seen without disclosing the exact details yeah. of that particular- I'd be happy to talk uh, to him. Yeah. You know, Michael has his phone number, so I could try to just, yeah, I mean, I'm sure story. he can give you some generalities if they can't give you the exact details of that particular yeah. you know, contract. Because that could yeah. just be kind of an, an example of, um, you know, yeah. what kind of a figure would be workable to use as a foundation for us. Yeah. But but do we need to make it, do we need to lowball this if if it encourages people to do it? Or do we need to be realistic about, you know, we're going to sock you with this unless you do what we ask you to do? I mean, should we go higher? It's it's not a it's it's not a matter of uh, a high or low at this point. We just have to figure out um, how how we want to pay in lieu of, and how we want to have you know, pay somebody to convert something that is existing already. Whether or not it's a high or low price is something you determine at the end. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought this was um, I thought this was they get just give us money with um yeah. uh, you know, i didn't realize it was it was a, a requirement that goes towards a conversion so i apologize well, yeah, two. Well, that's in the in 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 the case that the harbor is doing they're doing something in lieu and they're getting the actual units i think what we're trying to come up with is a number i think we once we have some data the data points we need to know are a, what do other people around us do so that we can understand what the, the market might bear? B, what would it actually cost us to convert units, you know, in the town of Cohasset so that we have some sort of reasonable list? And then I think three, it's a discussion among ourselves as to what do we think is, what, what do we want to propose? Because all we're going to be, we're a committee, remember, so, uh, you know, we will be proposing to the planning board saying, Hey, we think this is what you should put, in, you know, in place, and this is the this is how we we came up with that number. But I think it's a little premature to go into what that number is until we have some of these data points uh, in right. front of us. 
Yeah. I guess my question is, I, I don't know, do we want to be so specifically tied to the conversion rate on, we have this sort of like limited number of apartments that we've talked about and what the conversion rate for those apartments, um, but there are other development opportunities. So I, th I think when we talked a while ago about payment in lieu, I think originally one of the concerns that we had heard was like, we don't want money that can't be, can't actually translate into units. So if we weren't in a position to develop, then that wouldn't necessarily find its way into to, to becoming units. And then we have these sort of conversion opportunities, but those are only some, uh, only some of the different possibilities. So I think Lauren had mentioned that now there are a couple of parcels that might be available, like as the portfolio grows and as the opportunities grow and maybe we flex into different types of like joint ventures, I, I just don't want us to limit ourselves to a lower cost of conversion for a couple of apartments that happen to exist right now. If the market value of uh, payment in lieu is in the 200 thousands, we wouldn't want to take less than market value when that cash can be used for future conversion opportunities or development, you know, like payment toward development of, of affordable units. Uh, agreed. And I think that, that it wasn't to say that that would be our number. I think these are just data points yeah. that we, yeah. we need to know you know it's like if, if everybody else is doing 200 but you can't convert a place for here for under 500 well then 200 is not really going to be yeah. as good if yeah. it's you know if market bears 200 and the price is 100 we'll probably still ask for 200 right yeah so it's like i think we need just got to get as many of these data points together so that because anything that and this is going to kind of come to our next point anything that we put in place people will immediately try to tear apart, right? You know, and why we are completely wrong. So I think we have to make sure whatever we propose has, okay, yes, we thought about exactly, you, you bring up the points, Jen, exactly what you're talking about. Well, this is kind of what this would cost. This is kind of what this would cost. So this is how we came up with, you know, what we think, it, and this is what we're seeing, you know, you know, in the market. So this is what we think is fair. Um, and now they can disagree with what we, we decide, but at least we've taken into all those things into account because what I see in most of these, a lot of these meetings is they'll find the one thing you didn't look at, drill down yeah. on that and say, Oh, we got a two yep, more months. Yep. Yep, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll see you next year on, on something. Yep. So it's like, yeah. no, I totally agree. And that's why I, I think it just might be useful to sort of include the range and so not just conversion, but also construction. Yeah. And like, yeah, no, that's a good point. We can look at that too. Alrighty, so Susan and Mary, you have that for the March meeting. Um, good luck. Okay. Uh, the other thing, so this is actually a request from Mary, and I think Paul, you are helping on this as well. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust is looking at, you know, warrant articles for um, potentially, you know, how we suggested some town-owned land to move into um, the, uh, the the Affordable Housing Trust. So what they're asking for is, you know, how we narrowed it down to, I think, four that, that we recommended. If you guys could put together just, you know, a couple bullet points, you know, maybe like just a page on, you know, how did we come to those? You know, so like, once again, kind of trying to defend against, you know, people are going to ask a bunch of questions like, oh, but isn't that where they want to put the firehouse or whatever? Is that we looked if it was buildable, we looked if it was you know, you know, where it was located and, you know, how that was rated in the HPP. We looked at, you know, were other people looking for it? So if you two could maybe please put something together for the trust because then, and they'll put that as kind of backup material for their warrant. Um, okay. Thing. Have they, have they put a placeholder in for the article? I submitted the placeholder. Uh, so so Lauren, I think that was a yes from Lauren. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Carl, I'm going to have to talk to you about this. Um, I'm okay. actually away, don't have any of my original information or notes. So I'll probably need the um, to get that chart from hopefully you, Lauren, and then re 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 uh, uh, remind myself of what we, we did and so forth, and then get together with you, Paul, to um, uh, okay. make sure that, um, you know, we're, we're, that I have what I need because I, I, I apologize. I didn't. That's I okay. Clue this was going to be coming up. <laughs> yeah, as long as we have a placeholder in, in February, um, I think the text has to be nailed down by I think the first week of March. Okay. Gets approved by uh, you know the town manager, selectman, and whoever else would chime in on that, and then they freeze it. I think at the end of March for 
publication in April or May. So, yeah, I mean, if we could get something to them in the, in February, I think that'd be good because they're going to go in front of the select board and try to get them to, um, okay. you know, do it. And it's like, and what they're really looking for is, okay, why did we choose? Like, so there's 12 properties. Why did we, they, they've actually narrowed it down. They're narrowing yep. it down. So I think two, but why did the affordable housing steering committee narrow it down to these four? Like, why didn't we, because that's it. Why not this? Why not look at everything? Why didn't, you know, you, you know how these right. things so it's yeah. like we're just trying to give them as many answers as possible for all those why questions so that hopefully they can get uh, you know approval from the, uh, from the select. So the article is going to request acquisition of those parcels or I mean, not acquisition, yes. um, but uh, uh, selling two of the parcels. I've, I don't know what the actual. No, no, the, uh, the article is going to ask to move the parcels into the affordable housing trust. OK, if they're the going to say what they're going to do with them. I don't know. That's up to the affordable housing trust. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So I, yeah, we're just I trying, have documentation we're trying. that I can share um, that Mary referred to uh, that can go along with this packet. So I'll work with Mary and Paul to make sure we okay. have some information for the trust. Great. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just so everyone knows, the a lot of the properties have just been held by the town. Um, so what we're trying to do is move some of these into the trust because once they're in the trust, now the trust can make decisions. Um, yep more easily i should say and um and it's got you know financial backing behind it to be able to to move on something if we needed to move on something so um and of course Great. like everything else in the town if um if there's any spending it has to be appropriated at, at a town meeting so can i ask what the are these um buildable lots are these existing homes or what what is what are the what types of parcels are they? Are they in neighborhoods? They are all lots, you know, so we, we looked at, so we went through a process of looking through at all of the town owned lots. These are all lots. We narrowed it down to four that we thought would be, uh, you know, good, would be buildable. Um, you know, there, there's really two scenarios. One is, you know, we partner with some third party like a Habitat or something to build something or, you um, yeah, you know, the, the affordable housing trust could just sell the, the land. You know, some of it's in you know nice areas, um, and then they could use that cash to, to fund um, the trust. So, um, you know, what we did is we looked at. We wanted to make sure, yeah, a it's buildable, b that it's in a you know decent location. You know, all those types of things are are, are stuff that you know Paul and Mary, uh, you know, looked at when they 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 narrowed it down to the four. I don't know which two. The, uh, the trust is looking to, to narrow it down to, but we'll give them the information on how we got to ours and then they can fill in the information of how they narrowed it down to their two. There are two that are in, um, I, I forget who the fourth one is, where the fourth one, but there are two who are in, in more affluent neighborhoods that maybe it may be worth uh, selling to get a little extra money in the account. Um, you know, so that we could build, uh, or, or there could be something in a more modest neighborhood. There's one in a modest neighborhood, and I really, truly forget the fourth. So sorry. Can you all see this memo? Yep. Yep. So we the two it. that are that are gone into the request are this parcel at Middle Lane, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heather Drive. Okay. Uh, the one at the end of the uh, the cul de sac there. Yep. Yeah. Oh. That's but I would just get, I just focus on how we got to our four and you make sure they understand the, the thought right. process around that. They can talk about the thought process, how they went from the four to the two. Good. Thank okay. um, Any other sites? Oh, sorry. One last uh, group of sites is the uh, nonprofit owned um, pieces within the, uh, the, the, the town, so like the historical society and stuff with that. I've been trying to work with Ted Carr on that to uh, get somebody at DHCV. Unfortunately, his contact retired. Um, so we are trying to find somebody else that we can talk to and talking with the consultant. Just as a reminder, these are units that are currently already affordable, <laughs> but they are not in our affordable housing stock. They cannot be considered local action units. You know, can't go through the process that the consultant would normally take us through because they're already affordable. Um, so you have to be creating new affordable housing for it to go that way. 
So really the only way to get these in is to, is that more of a kind of case by case one off basis with the HCD. Um, and we're trying to figure that out, but there's about, I think it's seven units. Uh, all of them, you know, Beth had done some work and looking at what the, the rents are going for. All of them are well below the, what, what, what the affordable housing, um, rates would be like, so it's not that like to make them affordable, you know, they, they, they wouldn't have to reduce their rent. It's already well below that. So, um, we're, we're, I'll, I'll continue following up with uh, Mr. Carr on that. Rob, do you know um, Donna McGee, who's on the Cohasset Housing Authority? Because she used to work for DHCD. Yeah, I, I met Donna. Yeah, I, I'm going to reach out to her as well. Okay, that might be. A, she might, she might have, have a contact. A yeah. Good link for you. Good contact. Yep. Cool. Um, any other sites that we need to talk about? Okay, Affordable Housing Trust. Yeah, I think we've gone over most of the stuff uh, there. I gave a quick update. They had the, the request for the, uh, the, the town warrant, um, but nothing uh, I didn't stay on for, for the rest of it. Sorry, do that day. <laughs> so I, we had like a 15, 20 minutes um, um, to kind of go over the, the, the stuff that we were working on, um, but nothing else really to go on there. <laughs> Um, 2020, uh, any questions about affordable housing trusts? Nope. 2022 planning. Uh, we've talked about some of the stuff we're doing. Anything else people want to do? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I, I, I bring it up again. We, we just did it, uh, back in, um, I think October, November, where we went in front of the selectmen, um, and gave our report. I don't know if we're going to have to do that again in May during the town meeting or not, or submit our report and it gets published in the, uh, the town book. So I, I don't know, Lauren, is that something we have to have a placeholder for? So um, the annual report is being collected by the town clerk this year. I will uh, get in touch and see what was submitted last year by this group. Um, okay. and, then, and then I'll let you know about whether there's any deadlines. Okay, so if you can find out if, if there's a, if the trust did something too, because we might as well coordinate what what we're doing and putting them in so yeah. they don't contradict each other. I mean, personally, just, just my view is I feel we've got close to 40 units that potentially could come on. Um, if that's the case, um, I think we kind of want to focus on all these things in flight and hopefully land some, um, and that be really our main focus of getting to that ever elusive first unit. <laughs> um, and it's just, uh, I, I don't really think it makes sense to, yeah, I don't think it makes sense to start any new projects. I think we have more than enough projects yet, you know, going on, but if somebody disagrees, feel free to do so now. I, um, I did receive a uh, call from the uh, property owner at CJC and he has invited uh, anyone to come down and tour the property. Uh, they had uh, some veterans groups up there um, already. They've, they've got about four or five people with disabilities that have already been asking and inquiring. So um, he's been giving tours of the second floor, uh, which is I believe mostly completed. So if anyone from the board would like a tour, um, he'd be more than happy. Just let me know and I'll give him a call and we can set something up for a Saturday morning or whatever, weekday morning, whatever you want to go. Do we want to go as a group? Then we would have to put, post it in the, uh, uh, the town. Yeah, we can't, we can't, we can't be seen together. People, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I haven't been hanging out with you guys. Yeah. Is like, that what it is? Yeah, it's all, it's all, <laughs> It's the town meeting. It's not you. Uh, you know, I, I was, I was, I was thinking of our annual Christmas party we never had. Yeah. Uh, at, at Mr. Dooley's. Now it's going to be the or whatever it is. So you know, maybe. Well, hopefully it's open by December, so we we, we be good. Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, but I quit. Well, maybe maybe so. three of us could go <laughs> together yeah. since we wouldn't have a quorum. You know, so we can do groups of three or something, but. Okay. It's, it's not that we're deliberating on anything, so I don't think it matters if there's more than three of us there, but um, it is available. So 
But yes, you've sir. been yeah. through it already, right, Paul? What's that? You've been through it already? I have. I haven't seen the finished one. Um, I went through there with uh, Senator Patrick O'Connor. Uh, mm -hmm. We went through the whole facility together. Well, I'd be yeah. interested at some point if anybody else is interested or, or if not. Yeah, I, guess. I have an interest. I'm interested okay. in what the units look like that will, and, you know, I'm interested, or certain of them, certain of them are designated affordable and others not. Right. Yeah, I'd be interested if there's Okay, some I'll, I'll let them know that um, we have at least two folks plus myself um, want to go, we can, I, I mean, I was, it all I was, serious is if, if more than three of you, if three people want more want to go, just yeah. tell Lauren and we can put it in as a, you know, a tour field trip for the affordable housing steering committee. And okay. If the public wants to join us, they can let us know. Are some of the units in already um, built as, as uh, handicap accessible? Yes. Cool. We'll find out. I, mean, uh, can, I just have the voice of, voice of concern about having hosting a public meeting is that if you host a public meeting, everything's open to the public and given that these don't have certificates of occupancy yet, that's just my concern. So before we definitely agree to this, I would just like to check with the building inspector. Okay. okay. Let's cancel that. Three of you cannot go. Two at a time only. There, there we go. <laughs> Solves the problem. Warren's got enough stuff to do. She doesn't need to, to, to worry about this. So two at a time. If you really want to go, go. And I'm sure Paul can, can, can uh, or Paul can wait outside. As long as you're six feet away, it's okay. Don't speak to them. So, you got it. Uh, okay. Um, one one thought for 2022 planning. I I think that we always have these sort of active um, sites, but then we've had a number of other sites come up in conversation for a couple of different reasons that I sometimes always wonder what's going on with. I think one of them, for example, was the. Um, I think Lauren at one point there was somebody ask. Uh, there was some discussion. Uh, with people who are interested in uh, the Wayne Sawchuck's property behind Shaw's and different things like that. And, and I guess um, when I see these agendas and we've got the list of pending sites, that's always really helpful to think about pipeline. I also think about uh, potential development. So, you know, when we look at our agendas, the um, gas station property isn't on there and the number of units that could potentially be there. Um, like we've talked about the preserve, we've <laughs> talked about um, you know, now there's this potential condo development at um, where Atlantica is or at the mill, you know. So I guess I was wondering whether it would be helpful to have sort of like a spreadsheet of sites, but then also designating like potential developments in town so that we kind of had more of a pipeline view of units that are really preliminary in nature and not active, but that are sort of in our down the road um, consciousness uh, of potential units. And I wanted to throw that out. I'd, I'd be happy to like throw something together, but I wanted to see if that's something that would be helpful for others or if there are reasons not to do that, like reasons we don't want to be putting pen to paper on things that are so speculative. So my, my only, I mean, I think we can certainly think of a way to address that. My only concern is that some of these items are either so preliminary or, you know, they haven't even had a meeting with, um, you know, like planning inspections department to sort of, some of the things are more like a wit, we've had applicants come and sit and meet with us and we've directed them where they need to file, when they need to, you know, sort of the timelines, whereas some of it is, is a bit more speculative. And I'm just, I would just be, I would like to refrain from sort of get like getting hopes up or like putting things into meeting minutes and things like that, where it's a living document that it may not ever come to fruition, you know? And it just, yeah. I think um, even in terms of, if you think about like historical record search, it could muddy the waters there. And you don't want to discourage people from coming and having preliminary conversations because they think they're going to pop onto some. Right. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. So I would say. I that's wise. Yeah, I think, you know, Lauren, it, it probably makes sense to go on the agenda, make sure like there are a few things we could have had on here, like the, uh, the, the main street and stuff like that. So there's a few that are a little bit further mm -hmm. down, if we could, you know, fill that out and maybe just a, a standing item for pipeline but i wouldn't put anything on there because i find when you do that members of the other committees get really really pissed off at you and they call you and they yell at you going why are you putting this on as portable housing it hasn't been in front of the planning board and stuff like that so um the they get very very 
addresses get very sensitive if we put them on there. So I think it's got to be in order for an address to be on an agenda, it's got to be something that's really happening. And, and it's already yeah. the other boards already know about it. Um, otherwise, people yell at me. I um I can take it, but you know who was it? The HUD got mad at me, uh, Susan, when I put your name on it or something. I, you know. I, I think that um, where are your defenders, Paul? Yeah. yeah. So, so I think one thing that would satisfy what uh, what Jen's looking at is um, and it's something that I, I would like to see if it's possible. Um, we're kind of the last to know something went through planning, mm. and um, mm -hmm. you know I was kind of embarrassed on a couple of things that we didn't know about. And um, we already went through planning and people come to you and say, Hey, I heard they're building this and they're building that. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> so if there's a mechanism where, you know, I know people go to, in front of planning and just float an idea and then come back a year later uh, and they spend $10,000 for blueprints. Um, and then they come back and say, okay, here's what I'm thinking. So maybe if we get to the point where there's something that is more in that thinking stage, you know, a good example is that one Pleasant Street, you know, he put together plans, he got it approved and he costed it out and said, you know what, this is something that I'm, I'm, I may not build myself, maybe I'll, I'll sell it off. So um, when it came to the, um, the gas station, um, I saw those plans a couple of weeks ago. Um, I wasn't personally excited about the architect of the outside of it, but certainly um, it had, I think, 16 units at that point, but I know it's preliminary, but um, if there's a way we can, we can see that or understand that, that would be great. I know I just saw plans for the new Atlantica, which is going to be sliced up into five little pieces um, and have a hallway that runs out to the dock uh, into the harbor. Um, so it doesn't affect us on housing and, you know, it's uh, something I'm looking at for sewer, but, um, it, it'd be nice if there was something we're allowed to see other than trolling the meetings, uh, agendas for planning and, um, trying to figure it out. Yeah, that would be really helpful. Even if it just says list of, um, development projects, you know, that before planning and just, a range of potential units it doesn't have to be the ultimate, but just knowing the potential units as they've been presented would kind of give us that sight line. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, I mean, Lauren, maybe if there's something, I think two, we can do is two prong. If that's something you can think about, if you know about those, I mean, obviously we do have a planning board liaison. Um, and that's something I think that that person should be bringing to, to this meeting. Unfortunately, we don't have regular attendance of the planning board liaison. So that's maybe something else I can go back to the planning board about um, is that even if they can't come maybe in lieu of, they can at least tell us some of these things that are that are going on. So I can also suggest, I mean, I'm happy to sort of, like I said, figure out a way to address this. I think that's something that other committees and boards um, would appreciate. So I do appreciate the feedback. I just do need to be realistic in that, um, like right now, I'm also down two staff members. So I'm doing the job of three people. <laughs> this is one of yeah. seven committee um, meetings that I have in four days alone. So I am happy to continue to work on progress improvements. And I think this is a great recommendation. I just um, need to be realistic about bandwidth. It's something that I can certainly uh, involve in our process moving forward. Um, I just need some time to figure out how to do that and embed it into our processes and also work on um, onboarding some new staff. But I appreciate this and I think it's an excellent recommendation. It could, yeah, it could be something, you know, Paul's on our committee. So it, it, maybe he can say, hey, listen, this is what our what's on, what's on our agenda the next couple of months or weeks or whatever it is. And, uh, or we just met with a group a couple of weeks ago that is thinking about X, Y, or Z. So it's whatever he thinks he can disclose would be helpful too, so. Yeah, I think that's a good recommendation. Does he want to remain as the liaison as far as we know? I have no idea. I, I believe he does. He had been calling in over the summer when he was traveling all around the States. Um, so I'll, I'll even check in with him. It, he typically, does respond to the calendar emits, but he didn't respond to this one. We'll check in. Okay. Um, all righty. So that's 2022 administrative. 
Are there any member comments? I was, this is Mary. I was curious if, um, I thought I heard at one point there was uh, uh, thoughts about doing expansions at Avalon. I don't know the new name. And I didn't know if that was a dream I had <laughs> and it wasn't real or I actually heard it. You, you were not dreaming, Mary, that happened. They reached out, um, we spoke with them. They were going back to corporate um, because they had been investigating several of their other sites around the country and uh, we have not heard anything since. So I don't know if it was not as appetizing as other communities, but um, we did hear so okay. many stories about it. Great, thanks. Um, any other yeah, member just comments? It's just a placeholder for the uh, annual report and a placeholder for the article for the trust is all we need administratively. And what was the deadline again? Figure the end of February. Okay, thanks. So just to clarify, um, I think I broke up when I was talking earlier. I submitted for, on behalf of the trust the article intent to, for the placeholder and the warrant. So it's already queued up to be a placeholder in the annual town meeting warrant for those two parcels. Oh. That's what you're talking about. Okay. So the, do they know that you did that? Because they're asking us to opine. They, they, did, they know that I submitted that. They are doing a preliminary presentation about those articles to the select board. And just we're looking for some background information about why uh, this group came up with the four that they did. Uh, that okay. ultimately made it to them. So they're just, I think, looking for some more information um, just to have available if questions come up when they do this. And this is uh, sort of already teed up to be in the in the warrant for this upcoming town meeting. So we should practice the answer with a mask on? Yes. Yes, so we can stand up at town meeting? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. But I think uh, town meeting is going to be mask optional. There's been you know, a lot of stuff on Facebook about how masks don't, don't work. So, you know. It might be outside again. We never know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to get 18 inches of snow this weekend. Someone in Virginia called me today to let me know. Oh, that's good to know. Awesome. Um, all right. I'd Any... give you guys a photo of outside my balcony in Florida, but you probably wouldn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be nice, Mary. No. Uh, we, have a, we have a light dusting of snow up here. It's not bad. Yeah. It's like, when are we get, when's the snowstorm coming? Saturday, 14 inches is what it says on the iPhone right now. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, we can't approve the minutes because I didn't write them, so we'll work on that. Uh, next meeting, February 15, work for everyone? February yep. Uh, yeah. The day after Valentine's Day, we should all be sweet by then. <laughs> so that's another Zoom, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all Zoom all the time. Yeah. So yep. All right, the 15th it is, 4 p.m. Well, I didn't realize how dark my room was. I just been looking at myself. <laughs> the light outside is getting yeah. <laughs> I, I okay. thought it was um, Mary, I need your phone number. So maybe when we're through, I'll email to you and ask you for it just so we can stay in touch on this next step. Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Alrighty. Peace, okay. love, and happiness. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. Are we dismissed? <laughs> oh, okay. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. Susan, second. Beth, I feel like you're saying second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.